Hello, it's Tanisha Souza here, and I'm here to tell you about a nonprofit that we at TARDIS are going to be supporting from 2020 and beyond. It's called Home Aid Hawaii, and they are dedicated to ending homelessness in the state of Hawaii. For those of you who do not know, Hawaii has the second highest homeless rate per capita in the entire United States. And yes, you've seen it on TV. We are, it's paradise here, it's beautiful. But for a lot of people, our neighbors who are experiencing homelessness, it's not paradise. Uh, and we wanna do something about that. There are a lot of contractors, construction experts in the state who've dedicated their time, their labor, their resources in order to help build tiny homes for this part of our community. And we want to also be a part of that. So right now we would like for you, if you'd like to participate, to join us in ending homelessness in Hawaii. And we encourage you to learn more about it. Okay, take care, bye. My name is Kim Cook. I'm the executive director for US Vets Barbers Point. Uh, we are a facility here on the leeward side that provides supportive services to homeless and at-risk veterans and their families. We serve about 850 households per annual year, and we at US Vets have a motto that no veteran should be sleeping on the same streets that he or she was once asked to defend. So the reason I got into, uh, you know, into this work is that at US Vets, it's such an honor to see someone come into our program at their darkest, darkest time, call upon out us for help, and for us to be able to walk alongside that veteran. It's not from behind pushing them from the back or dragging them from the front. It's walking alongside in the journey with them to get to the other side, whatever that other side is for them. Homelessness is a very complex issue. Uh, I think there's common misconceptions in the community about why people become homeless. Uh, I think common misconceptions are that, you know, folks have mental health issues or substance abuse issues. The real reason why people are homeless is poverty. It is poverty here in Hawaii, especially on top of that, a lack of affordable housing. In a high cost market like Hawaii, you mix that with poverty, you get this very complex issue of homelessness. Behind me, you'll see a really exciting project that we are so blessed to be a part of. Uh, this is the Kalai Loa Kauhale. Uh, Kauhale is basically a tiny homes project here in Hawaii. We're very excited to partner with Nani Madaris and Home Aid Hawaii to provide this project for 36 formerly homeless veterans and non-veterans here on the leeward side. And we believe that integration is the answer. Integrating people into the communities of which they can, they're going to be working, their kids are going to be going to school, that is the solution to homelessness. We're going to make sure that each person has the ability to have some type of responsibility in this community. That is the vision for this Kalailoa Kauhale. I am reminded of, of a success story that we've had of a, a gentleman, local boy, grew up here, had a few deployments and, and had compromised mental health when he came back. Uh, came to us homeless, he entered our substance abuse treatment program, changed, transformed himself, still struggled in a program. You know, relapse is a very, very real thing. Um, and so helping him through that process, through the support that we provided, and I'm very, very happy to report that he is actually our very first veteran that was homeless and he owns a house now. He is our first veteran that is a homeowner, and it was such a great process for us to see him transform because we knew the struggle that he went through to get there. And that is why we do what we do here. And we're hoping that this place will serve as a place of solace for the individuals that we are so honored to be able to serve. Uh, my name is James Pakele. I'm the president of Dynamic Community Solutions which is a nonprofit that was created to support Pu'ohonu and Wainai, a houses village of about 250 people that live right next to Wainai Boat Harbor. The way I got involved with them is a previous relationship that I had with Twinkle. Her brother's son and my son was on the same football team. Flash forward, you know, some years, and I get this call from my, my in-laws, and they said, oh, you know, we're gonna do this uh, breakfast. I think it was Christmas. You know, we're gonna do this breakfast for the houses folks. And somebody says, oh, give, give the leftovers to Twinkle, right? And so I look over and I see her and she's sitting on the tailgate. And I go, oh, she's down here helping too. You know, I thought she was part of the, you know, the church or the effort or whatever, you know. So my wife, you know, she asks, hey, you know Twinkle? And she says, oh, you know she lived here in the village. I'm like, what do you mean she lived there, right? And uh, she goes, yeah, she run this place. So, you know, in, in this village, everybody knows everybody. Right? And that's, that's your support system. And so, you know, when you find people that don't want to leave, it's because they, they don't want to leave their support system. And, you know, so, so things like this actually fosters the building of that support system. They support each other. 
what you know what we do is we actually try to look at Twinkle, look at what she's done, pick up the lessons, you know, pick up what can be replicated, um, you know, what makes sense to be replicated, what can, um, you know, draw inspiration from you know all the work that she's done, and so you know something something like this falls right in line. Now a project like this is actually supporting community, and instead of breaking people, it's empowering people, right, and giving them the the resources and things that they need to become a better person, a better you know, self, and to build a better community. Kauhale projects like this, the help of Homemade, this is what Homemade does. Homemade provides the environment for this community building to happen, right? Because how can you build community when people come and they continuously sweep you at two o'clock in the morning, over and over and over, right? You look, eight years, house assistance has not go down, gone down. Unsheltered has gone up, and sheltered houses has gone down. The approach isn't working. We need a new approach. We need a different approach. And what a concept it is, right? That instead of trying to break somebody, you try to lift somebody. So the way I first got connected to the folks at Puhono Owainai was I, I started to go out onto the street and try to understand homelessness from sort of the ground perspective up. And so my first step was to build relationships with people who were experiencing homelessness. So actually it was after I pitched the tent in Kakaako and stayed there for a while and built some relationships, it was actually through someone I'd met there that I got connected to Twinkle and, and Pakele. And that was almost five years ago. And I started to go out to the village and spend time out there um, almost every week. I would sit and talk with Twinkle. I met some other folks in the village. And right away, the thing that struck me was that they had built an incredible community. Um, the kind of community that we all aspire to live in, where people know each other and take care of each other, look after kids together, look after kupuna together, and, um, and also who strive to be an asset to the, the wider community, you know? And I thought there's something really valuable here that we can all learn from, and not just about solving homelessness or houselessness, but that every community can learn from. So they have a neighborhood watch on steroids that has probably three dozen people from the village that participate in it. They patrol the village every night from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. There's a family right now. They have one son who is deaf. And I noticed these, these laminated posters going up around the village and that she and other village leaders are trying to make it a point to learn the basics of American Sign Language so that they could help, they could communicate with that boy and help, you know, that family along. I really appreciate Homemade and I appreciate um, how you folks are supporting Homemade as well. There aren't enough projects that are producing housing at that price point of $500 a month or less. The real need is at that $500 a month or below. You know, if we're gonna tackle homelessness, that's really the kind of housing that we need to be building. And, and we're not gonna get to an end to homelessness in Hawaii unless we have more of that. My name is Nani Medeiros, and I'm the executive director for Home Aid Hawaii, a nonprofit here on Oahu that helps to address homelessness. I got into this line of work because for about 20 years, I worked for government in the legislative branch and the executive branch, where I focused on a number of different areas of policy, but a few of which were housing, affordable housing, and homelessness. During my time in the Lingle administration, which were my last six years in government, I learned a lot about homelessness, affordable housing, and one of the things that stuck with me during those six years was, at that time, the fastest growing and highest at-risk population for homelessness were single mothers. And I was a single mother of a two-year-old baby, and definitely one of those people in Hawaii who lived paycheck to paycheck, and there wasn't much left over. So the um, reality really resonated with me. In our first four years of operating our programs, for every dollar that somebody donated, we were able to turn that into three dollars of giving back to the community towards from both our housing program and our outreach program. So the return on your investment for one dollar is more than double. And the way that we do that is by leveraging our relationships to ask those companies and people to donate pro bono to our projects. Our, our measure of success is if we're not spending a lot of money. Another thing that, that demonstrates our success in what we do and, and how generous our, our community members are in giving back that way is on average 
For our housing program, we save 95 to 98 cents on the dollar for our nonprofit providers. That's like a double win. So I think that Homemade Hawaii is a great investment for anyone who's considering really targeting um, their charitable contribution to an organization working in homelessness, specifically to provide housing and to support permanent housing. We would like to express our thanks to our friends at TARDIS because the contribution that they're going to be making so far to our Kalailoa Kauhale will specifically be helping us with 18 houses. TARDIS's contribution to date is going to end homelessness for at least 18 people this year. And that's just gonna multiply as the years go forward and the Kalailoa Kauhale stays, we hope, forever. Hi, my name is Jake. Uh, my company is Holly Partners Hawaii. Uh, I am also a board member of Homemade Hawaii and as it turns out I am also the builder captain of these 18 uh, tiny homes for Kalailoa. Um, a little bit how I got into Homemade, uh, I actually saw a two minute video of Josh Green um, walking through a community first village in Austin, Texas and I don't think that I even finished the video before I reached out to Homemade and uh, within a minute, I think it was less than a minute, Nani Madeiras called me and the relationship was bonded right then and there. And the next thing you know, I'm involved uh, in the design process of the tiny homes. I have time, I have talent, all we need is the funds and we can solve this problem, we can all solve it together. We have uh, a hardy exterior, we have a Trex deck, we've got nine foot ceilings. That allows the hot air to congregate in the unit, get up in there, and then the natural breeze through the bird blocks will take that hot air out of the building. We are insulated, so this structure, I know you can't see it on the camera, but you can definitely feel it. It is very cool in here. The windows, standard single hung vinyl. We have the LED light, it has like 36,000 hours. These micro units will be um, very efficient. They got great life cycle costing and uh, gonna last for a very long time. So we're in the open air cabana. We have a barbecue in here, so um, you can use your imagination. That's one thing that this, uh, this structure could serve in the community. This had a lot to do with the evolution of that. So, um, you know, it's very breezy, it's very outdoors. And a term that I always use is four walls doesn't get you a neighbor. So uh, this is a congregational place and uh, we look forward to seeing it out in Kalailoa being used every single day.